What's up, everybody, and welcome to The Way With Maps. Um, that was my old outro. Normally, I just do, what's up, everybody? It's your host, Maps, and you're listening to The Way Podcast. That's my new one for season two. Um, so, yeah, hopefully you guys are doing good. Um, this week, uh, I know that we are a little late to record, but it's all good. I got Jorge, like I promised. We're going to be talking about basketball stuff. Jorge, you can introduce yourself. Say what up. What's up, guys? Uh, I'm Jorge. Thanks, Maps, for having me on here. Uh really means a lot that you think that as a sports analyst, I am top dog. So, uh, again, thank you for having me on here. I did say that. That's literally what I said. Um, yeah, Jorge's my roommate this year, in case you guys don't know. Nano's also my roommate. I make a lot of references to Nano just because we talk a lot. So, Nano is also my roommate this year. Um, so, yeah. Um, I guess the biggest thing that we can talk about really is just uh, the NBA Finals right now. And kind of was popping. What is? What are your predictions? I notoriously predicted the five one. Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, not five one. The four one. The the Lakers in five is what yeah, I Lakers meant to say. Lakers in five, yeah. And I said, I remember you pulled up the recording. I, I did. You, I yeah. I had to prove it to Jorge because not not that he wouldn't believe me, but <laughs> I had to prove it to myself too. Yeah, no, no, for sure. Yeah. Um. So I also think they play later today. So hopefully, we'll find out. Who the champion is. And if I'm right. Yeah, if Javi's right or wrong. But um, so I recently just got word that the Lakers are choosing to wear their Mamba jerseys. And uh, they haven't lost yet with their Mamba jerseys. That's and bold. considering that they're already up 3-1, I'd say it's not a really good look for my home team, uh, the Miami Heat. Yeah. But I am going to say that regardless, win or lose of this finals... The Heat are in a good place looking forward. I agree. Because uh, I forgot, I think it was Max Kellerman said, uh, Miami's looking like a good team for any superstar with a wandering eye right now. Mm. And I couldn't agree anymore because when you think about it, the Miami team, or the Miami Heat are a team that they're playoff tested, right? Yep. Who else Who else knocked off the number one Bucks with the most winning record in the uh, regular season and the celtics too that was pretty impressive yeah i was that, impressed mostly by the celtics than the than milwaukee really well because like milwaukee i don't know for some reason like the celtics i felt like had a winning chance yeah i agree the celtics are just overall a stacked team offense and defense wise yeah if you uh look at them compared to the bucks the bucks have the defensive player of the year but i will say that Giannis isn't a Kawhi Leonard type player where you put him one on one and let him lock down their best defender. Right. Giannis works best as a defender when he is in a set up defense or like in a zone or something where he can come backside and provide help and or like he's not really good on the pick and roll and the switch. Yeah. Because you know you get him on the perimeter and he feels kind of shaky. Right. Just like most bigs, but um. Do you think he's just too young? I think he is very athletic, athletically gifted. Yeah. So there has been a lot of hype, obviously, for like due reason. You know, he deserves it. Right. He can score at will. Very LeBron James esque athleticism, if you ask me. Right. But I still think that he isn't a complete player yet. Right. And he has a lot. He also has a lot of time. Right. But he has a lot to. Uh, Work on if he's going to become a complete player. Right. His passing isn't bad, but it isn't on where you would like it to be. Right, Con and that's even considering that M Milwaukee's whole offense is give the ball to Giannis and then drive and kick out to the perimeter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you think that that's the problem with Milwaukee right now? That they don't really have a second person on that team that can carry when because like Giannis kind of crumbled in the playoffs, and then like the whole team went with him, and he got injured towards the end, didn't he? Yeah, I'd say. I don't want to. I don't want to say that Giannis isn't helping the team, but I will say that when Giannis is on the court, their focus on offense is play through Giannis, as anyone would when right. you have a superstar of that caliber. But I will say when Giannis did come out, and we saw a Milwaukee team who was up against the wall, they showed up more. I saw Ash. It was the first time in the last three years in which I've seen Chris Middleton play well in the playoffs. 
Chris Middleton went from from a at best six man, right yep. on a good playoff team to being a superstar. He was hitting yep. like clutch game time buckets, and he was playing well. I saw George Hill playing well. You know, I saw everyone honestly doing better because of the ball movement and needing to rely on other people other than Giannis. Right. I think yeah. it's important to note that Chris Middleton played better, though, when Giannis wasn't playing. Because if he played like that when Giannis was playing, then they probably would have won. Don't sure. you think? I'd agree with that 100%. Right. Do you think he deserved, do you think Giannis deserved the Defensive Player of the Year award? This year? Um... As I said before, Giannis is a great defender. Right. Right? But he he's not... The thing is, in the NBA, there are different kinds of defenders. Mm. Right? If you look at the past Defensive Player of the Year like winners, right. we have obviously like Rudy Gobert. You know, we have Kawhi Leonard. You know, and the difference between those two is one's obviously a great shot blocker, you know. Right. But catch him in a pick and roll and he's in a sticky situation. Yeah, and then the other one is just all around great defense. You right, know what I'm saying. Yep, and Giannis, I'd say, swings closer to the Rudy Gobert esque type style agree. of defense, yes. where he's a lockdown like shot blocker, mm -hmm. but he isn't necessarily a one on one defender. Right, and I think that was seen a little more clear in the Miami series when. They were actually interviewing Giannis, and they were talking about, would you go and guard Jimmy one-on-one? -on -one? And he was saying that he'll do, honestly, whatever coach says. And, you know, that's a great team attitude. That, But, I don't know, as a great defender, as Kobe once said, RP the GOAT. RP the GOAT. Um, he wants to go out there. He doesn't just want to score a bunch of buckets. He wants to go out there and guard the other team's best player and shut him down. Right. Do you think that just Giannis has more of that modern player mentality where, like, I feel like even LeBron has this sort of mentality where he's just trying to make the right basketball play, and he's, like, is that is that old school versus new school mentality? You got, like, Kobe, Jordan, they're like, I want to be the best player on the court, and I'm going to be aggressive, and I'm going to take on the, the best player on the other team versus I just want to make the right basketball play I'm just trying to win the game or, or do whatever's best that, so that what, whatever decision I make is, is going to be the best decision in terms of basketball as opposed to, like, legacy maybe. Well, I'm going to be honest. I'll, I kind of disagree with that LeBron little statement because if you do look back at the Nuggets series, right. in, the la in, the, in the fourth quarter, yep. we often saw LeBron switch on to Jamal Murray because, mm. you know, Jamal Murray was giving everyone buckets. Right. And he, I think he had that mentality in that moment of right. back up. I'm going to guard him. You yep. know, I'm going to take him down. And if he scores on me, he scores on me. But right. I'm going to lock down their best player. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not, hey, AD. Hey, like, anyone right. else. And do you think that LeBron has a more so a defensive? I think LeBron is clutch anyways. But mm -hmm. I'm just saying, I think he's more defensively clutch than offensively clutch. Okay. I'm thinking back to Iguodala. Oh, and the block, yeah, okay, bro. okay, okay. And the, the block. block heard around the and world. Like, yeah, the and block like, heard around the world. Yeah, yeah, and even in like this playoffs, I feel like we were having a – like, Hor and I watch all the games together pretty much, except when I commentate too much and he gets annoyed. But it's all good. <laughs> um, no, but we were talking about how, like you said, that like LeBron is kind of like taking on like a D-Wade role with – like how D-Wade did to LeBron, LeBron's doing to AD. Mm -hmm. So I feel like he's letting AD – He's like you said he was feeding AD, but also LeBron is kind of like still tight on defense, if that makes sense. So I feel like right now he's more clutch in defense because he's just focusing on preventing the other team from scoring. Mm -hmm. And he's putting up shots. I mean, last game he put up a few shots towards the end of the game. He missed a lot of them, which is fine. But, but he is playing really good defense, I still think. The thing is, I believe that LeBron impacts... 
the game right. in ways more than just scoring. Holistically. And while he is a physical specimen, and at 35, he's in an insane athlete. Right. I do believe that he is molding his game into a more, like, a better way to stay relevant. You know what I'm right. saying? Not relevant, but, like, a better way to stay in the league. He's and just not trying to contribute. get banged up all the time. Right. You know what I'm saying? He can't risk and injury. And that's where the AD comes in, you know what I'm saying? Where right. he's like, all right, big guy, do your thing. All right, score at will, this, that. He has his he has his, his assists up, you know what I'm saying? He can score whenever he wants, you know, but that necessarily probably isn't isn't what he wants to do. Right. Yeah, he, I don't feel like, well, I feel like you would agree with this too. It's like LeBron's not a primary scorer. Yeah. I'd say his natural tendency isn't to score. Right. Even though he can, and if he wanted to, he probably he, could. He, yeah, he definitely can if he wants to. But he just likes... I mean, that's why... He, I think that's why his stats are, like, so diverse. Like, he's got, like, really high stats across the board. Even in this last game, it's like, when you're watching the game, you feel like... Or at least I felt like, like, yo, AD's definitely, like, falling out. But then you look at the stat lines, and they have the same stats. Like, yeah. pretty much, let me pull up the stat line from the last game. But it's like, like, LeBron still had a bunch of... A points and he still contributed a lot um so yeah i do think that who do you think's getting the if the lakers win who do you think's getting the finals mvp lebron or ad i don't know man that's a tough question that's that's a tough question i'd say impact wise this entire playoff run it's been lebron you know what right. i'm saying yeah. um there have been there have been games where Anthony Davis goes off, and then there have also been games where Anthony Davis doesn't show up. He has a career low in rebounds right. against the Nuggets. Against, I'd say the Nuggets are a mediocre rebounding team. Right. Because Nikola Jokic is a great center, right? Yep. Offensively, he's insane. Defensively, he's pretty mediocre. I wouldn't even say he's... A great rebounder. Yep. And um, <clears throat> I'd still say it was kind of disappointing to see Anthony Davis only put up like two rebounds against the team. Right. Who's like one of their best rebounders. It, like are their guards. Right. He is know? also like a power forward. So like he should be getting more rebounds than like LeBron. Exactly. Or maybe not LeBron, but maybe like another person in his position. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I have the stat line here. So AD played 41 minutes, and he got 22 points, 9 rebounds, and 4 assists. And I was watching the game. I was thinking, like, whoa, like, Anthony Davis is playing really well. LeBron had played 38 minutes. He had 28 points, 12 rebounds, and 8 assists. So his stat line was a lot, a lot higher. And they took the same amount of field goals and made the same amount. Yeah. They both shot 50, 50%, which is kind of crazy. Um... But yeah, I don't know. I I I do think that LeBron I do think AD is key to them winning because he's been such a large contributor. But at the same time, I feel like they wouldn't be there without LeBron cuz AD led teams before, you know? Uh, I'm ge- I'm going to let my bias get a better of me. And personally, I just think LeBron has been the better of the two right this entire postseason run. Right. And a lot of people will disagree and say that LeBron hasn't been getting it done on offense. And my rebuttal is just that he can impact the game in ways more than just right. scoring. You know, often you'll see him just pull the ball back, you know, in a half court setting. Right. Set up a play, mm-hmm. have them run something. Yeah. You know, sometimes he'll pull up, sometimes he'll drive. Yeah. But. He always has a handle on the way the the game is going, you know? Yeah. And so I'd like to know the percentage of time that the ball is in his hand. But regardless of when the ball is in his hands, his presence on the court is always felt. Right. I would agree. On both sides of the court. Yep. And uh, he has had some games that it's a block fest. The series against... The Rockets. Right. He wasn't giving Russell Westbrook a break. Yeah. He was th- a little upset about that. <laughs> yeah. And um, I think he deserves it. Yeah. If they, if, if 
If they win, well, they most likely will win. Yep, tonight, uh, tomorrow night, probably. No, they play tonight, eight twenty. Do they? Don't know. I thought it was Friday. Is it? Yeah, I think it's a Friday game. All right. Here. Yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow yeah. at nine. Okay, tomorrow they play at nine. All right. Well, uh, we'll know by then. Yeah, who gets that MVP? Who gets I, the MVP? Yeah, I do think that. Also, LeBron does score a lot. I just feel like people try to compare him with like, obviously. Michael Jordan and Kobe, and they're people forget that they're shooting guards. So like their whole position is built around shooting, and it's a lot more offense driven. Whereas LeBron is more so. He's a small forward, but he's also like, he kind of plays the point guard position in the sense that he's like a, a distributor as well. So I just feel like Le, it's like you're saying like LeBron's not really that focused in terms of scoring, but he is definitely. 100% contributing in other ways, be it passing, assists. He's like, there's this, I don't know if you've seen this video, there's a video that like, um, oh, who's who's the, who was the shooting guard when they were in Cleveland, not... Um, Matthew Dodo and J.R. Smith. Um, Isaiah. Isaiah Thomas. Is it Isaiah? No, it's not Isaiah, Isaiah Thomas. Thomas was there for like a year, but he didn't really play it's much. Not him. It's um, Iman Shumpert. That's what oh, I'm okay. thinking about. Iman Shumpert. Yeah. He's got this video where he's talking about like LeBron and his oh, basketball and his IQ. IQ. You saw that? Yeah, that's an insane. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, crazy. yeah. That's a crazy video. But I do think that like that's what he's doing all the time. Mm -hmm. Like that's what his head's at. It's always like analyzing, breaking down the game, thinking about like film and stuff like that. And he's like super compact. Now that you uh, talk about interviews, I don't know if you've watched this but uh, a couple years ago, right, when he was still in Cleveland, and uh, I think it was Markeith Morris, or Marcus Morris, he was on the Celtics. Right. And they were interviewing him, M Morris, and they were asking him about what's it like to have to guard LeBron James. And uh, he explained that in one of the games, the Celtics were inbounding the ball. And... Brad Stevens was calling a play from the sideline, and Morris said he uh, he did like a backside screen or something, and LeBron James corrected him on his own play because he's memorized. He said he memorized the other team's playbook. Yeah, and he told Morris that he was going the wrong way while they were running their inbounds play. Yeah, that's crazy, bro. <laughs> and if that doesn't speak to your bro, basketball IQ. Yeah, man. LeBron is like kind of. A genius when it comes to basketball like he knows he studies the game so deeply like he knows everything about it and like that sort of ability to just remember plays and stuff like that that's super impressive do you think do you think the passing of Kobe Bryant has any influence in how the Lakers have performed this year do you think it gave them extra fuel or do you think they would have done it regardless for sure without a doubt I think they would have done it regardless but the additional fuel has been helping them. Right. Hasn't been helping Danny Green, but it's been helping everyone else. <laughs> it's fired. <but> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Danny Green's been shooting like twenty nine or like twenty six percent from the field this right. entire like postseason. Yep. Which is kind of ridiculous since he has a he's a shooter playoff caliber like record. Yep. You know, he won in Toronto. But um I don't know. Overall, I'd say Alex Caruso has stepped up. Oh, I'd say sure, yeah. I agree. Contavious Caldwell Pope was their literal savior last game against the Heat. Yep, I would agree. Um, I'd say that Mark Markeith Morris also stepped up in the postseason. Mm -hmm. I say he's been knocking down threes, even though he has been doing that in the regular season. Right, but um, Rondo's been amazing. Yep, I Ron agree. Rondo's I, been great. You think he's like underrated? Oh, without a doubt. I think we're seeing Celtics Ronda right now. Maybe without less less antics. People you forget know. he's old. Yeah, he <laughs> he definitely is old. He's not he's not pulling any uh, behind the backs or like fake pass lays. Yeah, but he's playing super well for how old he is. Oh, and no he's, question. He's shooting now. Oh yeah, he, for sure. he wouldn't he he didn't used to be able to shoot that well, and now he's like decent. They still don't respect him on the line, but still, which is good, kind of, because it leaves <laughs> him open, bro. Yeah, he is he is shooting twenty eight percent. From three. Yeah. Didn't you tell me that, like, if the Lakers win, they'll be, like, the oldest winning championship team or something like that? Yeah. If you look at their team, right, LeBron, 35. Contavious called... Oh, all right. I'll 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 go from youngest to, to oldest, oldest, yeah. Right? 
their youngest player is Kuz? 24. Is it Kuz? Okay. Yeah. Yes, Kyle Kuzma. Anthony Davis is 26. Contavious Caldwell Pope also is 26. Quinn Cook is 26. And then Jared Dudley, 34. J.R. Smith, 34. Dwight Howard, 34. Danny Green, 32. Rondo, 33. Oh, Caruso, 25. Decent. You know, he looks 70 though. <laughs> yeah, he looks like he is in his third divorce. Facts. <laughs> Markeith Morris, 30. You know, so it's the they'll be the oldest team to have won a championship. Yeah, it's crazy though because they it's like they're all all old, but they're playing really well. Yeah, like Dwight Howard's been playing kind of good too. Yeah, which he's like he was. I thought he was on the way out before he was on this team. No question, especially him bouncing from team to team and not really. Yeah, yeah, that's facts. Um, I will say. I'm looking forward to Heat basketball in the next couple of years because if you look at it, right, Jimmy Buckets is only 30. Yeah, I was about to say. Tyler Hero is only 20. Yeah, I was about to say. It's <laughs> kind of crazy how, well, first with the Lakers, it's crazy how AD is still 26. Oh, yeah, you would never think so. He's like about to start his prime. You started your prime in like 27. Yeah. 27 to like 31. Uh, everyone has like different primes. Right. LeBron's, pl- Le- Le- LeBron's prime was like 25. 20, yeah, 24 to like 38. That's yeah. his prime. He's still in his prime. Yeah. Um, I will say AD being 26 is actually ridiculous. That's insane. And I pray for him to live an injury-free career. career. But if he does have an injury-free career... He might be one of the greatest to ever do it. He definitely he's he has potential if he has the longevity too. Yeah, because I feel like that's one of the things that LeBron has going for himself too is how how long his career has been and how long it still will be. Like we don't like LeBron is thirty five, right? He's probably going to win a championship, and we don't see an end to that. We don't see a decline in physical health for him or like. He's definitely taking more care of his body, but he's still putting up mad stats. I will say, last year was the first year that I ever saw LeBron deal with any sort of injury. Right. And I was a little worried. Then he came back even stronger this year. Yeah. And he's been destroying it. So I'm curious as to see how long he lasts in the league. If he, I think he'll, I think he'll out, outlast like Vince Carter. I think he'll make it to like forty one or forty two. Yeah, Vince retired at forty. Yeah, yeah, he, dude, he definitely could. He'll probably play with or like his a son. Dirk, a Dirk type yeah. thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Dirk was old as bricks yeah. in his last year. That's facts. But do you, uh, do you think he'll play with Bronny? <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't see him playing with Bronny because I think he'll stay on the Lakers. Right. And the Lakers what have Bronny potential to be by the Lakers, though. But I think they have potential to be like really good for you the next so? couple of years. And Bronny's already a sophomore. Right. In three years, I still think the Lakers are good. And Bronny will be a top pick. With this team? Not not with this team. I don't think Kuzma will stay on the Lakers much he, longer. He'll want to get some of that star time. Yeah. And money probably too. They need to get rid of J.R. Dudley. J.R. Smith? Oh, no. J.R. Dudley. Oh, my bad. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I was reading J.R. Smith. Yeah. Dudley. Yeah, they need to get rid of Dudley. He's not doing anything... I don't even know if he's getting paid the veteran minimum. If he's getting paid anything over the is veteran minimum. Is he playing minimum. well or not? No, he has not been playing. Yeah, I've, I have. The most he played was the .7 seconds left on the game last game. I was saying he just, he's good for a bench player, though. No, he's not good for a bench you player. You don't think so? I think he's terrible. Jared Dudley was decent in other teams. <laughs> like, he's not good, but he's, like, okay. Which Last is like, time I think he scored a point was on the Nets. That's fair. That's probably <laughs> that's fair, though. That's facts. He is averaging... Yeah. Zero field goals attempted, zero made, one minute per game. Right. Yeah. Let's talk about the Heat a little bit. So do you think the Heat need to make changes in their roster? to Like, do you think this is a fluke that they made it this far? Do you think their team is that good? How come they're a fifth seed and they're, like, in the finals? All this stuff. Do you think going forward they need to change the team? Do you think, no, it worked one time? Let's keep it like that. What do you think? That's a good question, and I I wouldn't say this season is a fluke because I don't think flukes happen in the NBA. Right, okay. Because, you see, I, I don't see this season as much as a fluke, as much as I see it 
Allen and Iverson's 2001 right. finals debut against the Lakers. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I see what you're saying. La- they, they weren't a good team. Yeah. They had old Matumbo was their second star. Right. And then a bunch of no names. Will this get Jimmy Butler into Hall of Fame? Probably. Uh, I believe so. Probably. I believe he deserves it. it. I mean, that run with AI got him into the Hall of Fame pretty much. Yeah, and his career was cut short. And he also lost 4-1, didn't he? Yeah, he did lose 4-1 oh, as well. Yeah. And he also had a 40-point game. It is. That's solid. Yeah. Um, so do you think they should change up the roster or not? Nah? I think... Obviously, keep Butler, keep Hero. I feel like those two complement each other perfectly. Yeah, I think they need someone to come through and run the offense. As much as I love Goran, he's 33. Right. So I, I think he has two more years in him because of his style of play. Yep. You know, he's not necessarily a distant sniper. Right. You know. He's not a shooter like that. He 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 does very well in the mid-range. Yep. And he drives to the basket insanely well for his right. size. And I don't think you can have longevity driving to the basket like that. Yeah, at that at, at that, that, that size, at that, at that size and that age, yeah. you know. And I love Goran. And Goran is honestly one of my favorite players. Yep. Because over anything, he's wanted to win. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Regardless of where he was at. Think about it. He was traded, right? Yep. From Phoenix to Miami Heat in like, I think it was 14. Yep. Right? I didn't know that. He's been playing there for a long time. Yeah, he's time. been playing. For, and he's been on the brink of getting Cut. traded yeah. constantly. Yeah. He almost got traded to the Timberwolves for Jimmy Butler. Yeah, solid. I didn't know. I don't know if you knew that, but I didn't. last second they cut the deal. It's crazy how Jimmy's been moving so recently in between so many teams. Yeah, right? he went from Bulls to Timberwolves, Timberwolves to Sixers, Sixers to, to Miami, uh, Miami. Which yeah, is crazy. And um, I the other day I was scrolling through Twitter and I saw a, a Miami Heat fan page. They made a montage of all the tweets that Sixers fans uh, tweeted out when yeah. he left the Sixers to come to Miami. Yep. And I think that sort of proves that there's no other culture like Heat culture. Right. You know, in the sense of it doesn't matter if we're the underdogs. We're going to put our head down and we're going to work hard. Right. And we're going to grind. And that's, I think, why Jimmy Butler came. I don't think he came to Miami to vacation the rest of his career because he's also still 30. Still he's, relatively young. That's still like peak prime. Yeah. He has he has five years left of him. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I'd say if they can get a point guard, right? Right. To who, come in and run an offense. Who would you like there? Who would I like there? Um... Damian Lillard. Oh, that would be a dream come he true. He could, dude. I mean, they made it to the finals. I mean, maybe not Damian because he's too loyal. Yeah, he's too. But he like, loves the city. Maybe of Kemba Walker. I could, I, I could like Kemba Walker there. Kemba Walker's proven that he can work with other superstars in a like dynamic offense. You know right. what I'm saying? Yep. He did have his on and off games against the heat yep there was one game he was dropping like 28 and then the next game he couldn't shoot to save his life yep um i would i i'd like kemba right kemba is one of those players that the the offense is not working well everyone's standing still he will generate that energy right he'll he'll be that microwave he'll get you a bucket yeah you know and he'll get the energy up um what about russell westbrook no, I, I think <laughs> I love Westbrook as a player. Yeah, I don't think he fits the team though. I don't either. You need like a he passer. fits the team in the sense of the grit, the of the grit and the culture. He can drive. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And the Heat have a bunch of shooters everywhere. He would just have to drive and dish out. He would have to drive and dish out. Right. But lately, I haven't been seeing. I do him. feel like he's probably gonna be get. Like I don't think I don't think the Rockets want to keep him. I don't either. I think Mike D'Antoni has to do something, right? Because this year wasn't was the first year you couldn't blame James Harden for their loss. Yeah, you know, because as a coach, you literally can't just say, "Hey, James Harden, our entire offense is you playing one on one." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. while the Clippers did that with Kawhi Leonard. 
you know, Doc Rivers still had a trick or two up his sleeve. Right. And they also had, you mean this year? This year. They had Paul George, too. Yeah, but if you ever looked at, like, mo- most of the games, yeah, it was like, give Kawhi the ball. Let you know, him do his thing. He's going to post up. He's going to take three dribbles. Right. And he's either going to pull out and pass. Yep. Or he's going to take, like, fadeaway jumper or drive. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I see But it, it, it always ran through Kawhi. Right. You know? And it's similar to that in Houston. And I would have been more okay with Russell if he wasn't just throwing the ball away constantly. Yeah, he does. He did that so much this he was playoffs. He was playing very poorly in the sense of, like, playmaking ability. Yep. And just decision-making mm-hmm. and... I see his stock go down, you know. Yep. I still think he's a superstar, though. I think he he is a floor raiser. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Instead of a like ceiling raiser. Yes. If you know what that means, if you understand, yes. you know. And I don't think we need that at, on the Heat, right? As much as we need a ceiling raiser, right? You know who would be perfect. Oh. A little Kyle Lowry action. That would be my he, dreams come he true. He might, do. I mean, why is why do you think he's still... I mean, Toronto made it to the play- playoff this year, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Semifinals? They got knocked out by the Celtics. Semifinals, right? Playoff yeah. semifinals? Yeah. So they won the first round? They won first round, won second round, lost the third round. Yeah. I do think it's going to be interesting to see how... Miami builds on this team just because I feel like they're definitely in a unique position where they can do whatever they want, kind of. They just have to be smart, though, because if they trade or acquire the wrong player, it'll throw their entire team out of whack. Because I feel like this entire team is built out of confidence. And like you mentioned, the Heat culture, I feel like it's definitely like Pat Riley plays a huge role in that, um, for sure. And building that culture and just like, one of the things I was seeing on on Instagram was how, like Pat Riley didn't tank. Mm-hmm. He was just like yeah. playing. He was playing the game how you're supposed to play it. He built a team like you're supposed to build it, um, and he just draft. They just drafted well, and then they acquired Jimmy Butler. And I think Jimmy Butler was a perfect complement to Tyler Hero in terms of like their worth ethic and I their work ethic. And I think that Tyler Hero is going to become such a better player because of it. Um, so, if, I mean... You see, I hope they keep this core group of Jimmy, Tyler, Bam, Bam. and uh, Duncan Robinson. Yeah. You know? He showed out. Oh, yeah. He's been playing phenomenal. Didn't you tell me he went, like, undrafted? Yeah. He he originally was a D3 player, yeah. right? He played for Williams yeah. till his coach set him up to go to Michigan, and then he went to Michigan. Michigan, he didn't get, un- he, he didn't get drafted. Right, but he made the Miami Heat summer league team. Yeah, right. From there, they were like, "All right, we'll put him on the G League team." Played in the G League, played so well. They moved him up, and then he had this phenomenal season out of nowhere. Yeah. Problem with him though is he's already twenty five. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He he's not like one of those young cats that you can, you know, mold into maybe like a better. Defensive player, a right. better handler, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but he's been pretty clutch. I feel like... Very clutch. He can be... But he has his games, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. But he can he can be the Clay Thompson to Tyler Hero, Steph Curry. Do you think? He needs more consistency. And Shooting. so does Tyler. That's fair. So does Tyler. But they're both kind of young. Oh, very young. In the sense, like... Tyler Ty- definitely is. Tyler's only 20 years old. Yeah, that's crazy. And no. he and he's been shooting super clutch, dude. Yeah, I mean not in this finals, but in the rest of the playoffs he has, which I understand. Because if you're, dude, think about it. If you're Tyler Hero, it's like all of a sudden you're in your first ever year playing basketball professionally. You're playing against LeBron James. Yeah, that's a little scary. That's a little intimidating for yeah. a rookie. And also, he doesn't know. He's gonna let his nerves. He doesn't know how to control his nerves yet and mm-hmm. his emotions. And I feel like the same thing's happening with Jimmy Butler. At least in those first two games, last game they def are uh, not last game. Uh, game three, uh, which was the one that the Heat won, they they did really well. They stayed grounded, and even in this game four, uh, the last game, 
they were kind of they were there for the most part until the end where like the Lakers took over. But it was kind of neck and neck the game. So I do think that like they just need more playoff experience. They just need more. This finals experience I think is going to be super good for Tyler Hero and Jimmy Butler and the entire Heat team to f- understand what what being in the finals feels like, to understand what they're competing against, so they can prep. Uh, next season going forward and pro- they'll probably be in the finals within the next two years yeah i can i don't know about them repeating next year you know because that celtics team is mad strong right. i was thinking more so because of brooklyn because of brooklyn with kd i guess it depends Kyrie. on how kd comes back but he'll probably come back yeah decent. they haven't even started and i can already see some tension in in that group you know because they both they both want to be top dog not just that, just like Kyrie, Kyrie made a comment the other day about how they don't even have like a head coach. Like KD could be the coach, the head coach one day, and Kyrie could be the head coach the other day. Right. And there's no leadership, is what you're saying. There's no definitive leadership. I'd say first year with a new coach who's never coached before. Right. Who's their coach? Um, Steve Nash. Oh yeah, Steve Nash. And even though he's been around coaching, he's been around the, ball, the game for so long. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I also don't know if Steve Nash is the type of coach, like his playing style. I don't know if it's the same, is the if his playing style and his experience is conducive to KD and Kyrie's playing style. Yeah, because he was more so like, I guess like a Steph Curry type player. Really? Don't you think in like passing, like? He was more, let's say this, he was like a floor general, I feel like. Yeah. Steve Nash was just like playmaking and setting up his teammates. Whereas I feel like Kyrie and KD are more trigger happy and they're just like, we also do that, but we shoot a lot more than Steve Nash did, I feel. Well, you also have to understand that Steve Nash didn't have any shooters on his team. He was playing on a Suns team with Amari Stoudemire. Right. You know what I'm saying? Throwing him oops all the time. Right. They're <laughs> yeah. And um, I think you also forget a little... Of like OKC KD, yeah. I don't, know, I don't know if you remember OKC KD. He worked perfectly with Russell Westbrook in the sense of both of them were trigger happy. Yeah, you know they both got the ball. Yeah, but there were unbelievable plays and unbelievable chemistry between the two. Yeah, you know, and I think they'll mesh well. I, I think, I, I think, don't. I can't say anything about how Steve Nash will coach. Yeah, can't imagine he'll be a bad coach because he should been so, such a good player. I also don't see Steph Curry being much of a floor general. Right. You know, when I think floor general, I think, like, LeBron. You know what I'm saying? I think... Um, That's fair. I meant, like, I meant in the sense that, like... Yeah, okay, that was a bad statement to make. You, I agree. But I meant in the sense that, like, he's... I see Steph Curry as a type of player that's... Which, let's put this established. Steph Curry's also very trigger-happy. Yeah, but, if anyone's... <laughs> yeah, but... but he I has meant, the right to be yeah, trigger-happy. But I see him as, like, a player where, like, he's got kind of, like... He's a lot smaller than a lot, than his teammates, mm-hmm. and he's kind of always like Golden State has a really good ball movement, and he's always on the lookout for like, you know, like Steph Curry has like pretty good passing ability too. He has a um, great passing ability yeah, in that sense. So that's where I was more so looking at it. But but you're totally right. I can see I can see them either meshing beautifully or really and bad. them being insane. Because think right. about it, who do they have coming off the bench? I don't know. Who's Spencer Dinwiddie's probably going to be their, sh- their, nah, either Spencer or Spencer Dinwiddie or Karis LeVert, one of the two. Right. Right. Regardless, one of the two has to come off the bench, and both of them are very good scorers. Yeah. Right. They have DeAndre Jordan playing center. That's decent. and or, and or, um, Jared. What's his name? Jared Dut. No, not Dudley. Oh, I, I th- here. I'll pull up his roster. You know what? You know who I'm talking about. I think it's the other Jared. There's two Jareds in the league, <laughs> isn't? Aren't there? Yeah. Here, Brooklyn Nets. I'll pull it up. Um, Jared Allen. Yeah. Jared Allen. Yeah. They have Jared Allen, right? Yep. Who's also a really good center. You know, very good at cleaning the glass, right? Yep. Gets every rebound. Swats a bunch of, a bunch of shots. Then you also have Joe Harris, who can fit nicely with the team. Yep. You know, he's just a spot up shooter. Straight spot up shooter. You know? Yep. Um, I don't know much about Timothy Luau Cabarro. 
I haven't yeah. seen him play that much. Yeah, I feel like they'll I feel like they'll definitely make it to the playoffs. And they, how far do you think they get? Finals maybe? Let's think about the East next season. Yeah. Right? East next season. Do you think Heat the Heat are going to become the Do you think they're going to stay in the race? Yes. Yeah. I agree. Without I, a doubt. I think they played really well and they showed that Within the East, they can be a dominant team. Yeah. And they're probably going to, because of their this final playoff finals run, I think they can acquire better players to improve their team. Yeah. I think the Heat is up there. The Celtics, what do you think? I think that just you can't count out Jason Tatum. That's fair. He's, he's a superstar. Jalen Brown is a superstar. You know? Yeah. yeah. He didn't play that well because he didn't get the ball much. Yep. You know, and those are two players that need the ball to get cooking, you know? Yep. Jalen Brown isn't much of a like spot up shooter, like catch and shoot, but that's what he was doing some of the series. Yeah, because that's what the team like needed. Right. But between them, they have Gordon Hayward finally healthy again. The mustache man. Yeah, he is filthy. Yep. Right. All, all the way from nineteen forty two. Yeah, uh, he needs to shave that mustache. But um, Kemba Walker, Kemba Walker's also. Yeah, they do. So so, Miami Celtics are still in the race. What do you think about the Sixers? Sixers, I, I see. I think they got to split up. I see them rebuilding for the rest of their career. They think do. About it like they have to. I don't know. I don't know what happened to Joel Embiid. Mm-hmm. Joel Embiid took a a downfall. I feel like in the sense that like he used to be like popping really strong. Mm-hmm. He's just not that consistent anymore. We don't see him making headlines. He's dominant, but it, I don't think he's what he used to be. So he just has to get on his A game and start just playing better. And Ben Simmons, I don't know, maybe it's like the Ben Simmons, Joel Joel Embiid, do you think they work well together? I don't know because think about it. Neither of them can shoot well from three. That's what I mean. You know, Joel Embiid, eh, he can hit one or two here and there, but he he is one of the best low post scorers. Have you seen that audio clip where like J.J. Redick said, the 76ers um, screwed up. Because they let me go, like they didn't. They yeah, didn't acquire they didn't me. have a single shooter. I agree. They, they should have kept sh- JJ Redick. That and then you trade, and who do you trade for? Josh Richardson from Miami. Yeah. I love Jay Rich, yeah. but he's not a shooter. Where you know is where is Redick now? Where's on the Pelicans? Okay, he's on the Pelicans right now. Right. And um, once we finish talking about the East, we should talk about the Pelicans because I think like, don't they have like a bunch of like yeah, young they star have, powers? Yeah, they have Lonzo. They have Josh yeah. Hart over there. They well, have Zion. Okay. They have. Yeah, we'll get to it. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But so Sixers are out, kind of, of the race. Like they, they're gonna, not going to make it to the to the. Do you think they're going to make it to the conference finals? I don't think they'll make it to the conference right. finals. So, I don't think they'll make it to the conference semifinals. They'll make it to the playoffs. They'll be like first round out, maybe second round. I say they say second round out, second round. Right. Yeah. So Miami's on the come up. The Celtics are still remaining. The Sixers are iffy. What about the Raptors? I feel like they're still kind of solid. The unless... Raptors are kind of solid, and I did not even expect them to make it this far right. this year. And the fact that they have has been insane. Yeah. Unless, um, oh God, Kyle Lowry. Unless Kyle Lowry goes to Miami, <laughs> they're still making it. They're yeah. still doing it. Kyle um, Lowry is honestly one of my favorite point guards. And um, he is the definition of a ceiling raiser. Right. You know? Yeah. And... OG Ag- Aganobi, you can't count him out. Right. He he played phenomenal. Yeah. Yes. They have Pascal Siakam, who didn't even show up these playoffs. Yeah. He didn't even show up. That's facts. You know. Yep. He didn't even get started. He wasn't even warming up. Yep. And they still made it. Like. Yeah. Pretty so, deep. Yeah, I think them and then Brooklyn. Of Brooklyn course. for sure. Um, That's so Pelicans. Now you have to talk about the Pelicans. Yeah. What about they're, they're, Grizzlies though? Grizzlies though. Are we talking about the West now? No, wait, Grizzlies. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Pelicans and Memphis are in the West, aren't they? Yeah. I know it's a weird line. They draw right? it like right. Like, you think that Memphis, Tennessee, Tennessee. You know what I'm saying, dude? Louisiana, yeah, yeah, Louisiana. Come on now. Yeah, here, let me take a final look at the Eastern Conference to see um, if they got any any more yeah. promising. I don't see the Magic getting good anytime soon. I don't see the Hornets getting anytime soon. I don't see the Knicks getting good anytime soon. I don't see the Pistons or the Cavs, you know. Yeah, who's in? Who's in the Pistons right now? 
on the Pistons. They have Blake Griffin. That's but, it. <laughs> yeah, that that is really about it. Yeah. Do they have um, uh, is Kevin Love still in the Cleveland? Yeah. Kevin Why? Lo- uh, he's on contract. Yeah, he's on contract. I think his contract expires soon. They'll probably want to get rid of him because he's not really doing much for them. Yeah. And they need to. He can do really well in another place. Exactly. They he can he can flourish. Somewhere they might else. move him to the Lakers just because Braun loves them, don't they? I don't know about that. He'll be like, nah, not not again. I don't even think the Lakers need him. What do they need another power forward for? Well, they're losing uh, Kuz. Oh, they're not losing Kuz. He'll probably just get traded, and because like, I don't know. I don't see. I don't see them. Trading love right. to the oh, Lakers because the bu- there's not for- much they could get from the Lakers. Yeah. So we forgot about the Bucks. Do you think they'll build? Oh, the Bucks. Yeah, 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 yeah. So next year's playoffs, I'm looking at the Bucks, the Raptors, the Celtics, the Heat, the Sixers will make it. The Nets will, and then we're missing one team. Do you think maybe the Bulls? I think with this new coach, it's a possibility. Yeah, because they have talent. They yep. have young talent. Yep. Zach Levine, I love. Colby White, I love. Yeah, I think they're... Laurie Markkinen, I love. You know, they have a good team, a young team there for sure. For sure. Um, maybe them or, um, oh God, what's this other team I'm thinking of? Uh the Pacers. We'll make it to the playoffs. Uh no. <sighs> I don't see the Pacers making it to the playoffs. They were T.J. Warren seed. was. Playing incredibly well in the bubble. Yeah, but, I mean they Victor were. Victor Oladipo seed. was also playing well. Yeah, I don't know. It all, it's all up in the air because Miami Heat was also a black horse coming out of yeah, nowhere. That's totally fair. You that's know, totally fair. Yeah, hundred. They they were under the Pacers, right? And they still swept them. Yep. You all know. Right. Yeah. All right. Let's talk about let's talk about the Pelicans now. Um, why are they not performing well? <laughs> Um, Too young. I think youth has something to do with it. Do you think they play well as a team? It seems to me like they have a lot of good players that would play well with other people, but I don't know if they play well together. Like I don't think Lonzo. I don't know if Lonzo and and Ingram are a good combination. Really, it didn't work in the Lakers. It's not working right now well, in the Pelicans. They're also still young. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's fair. You know who I love on the Pelicans? Who? Drew Holiday. Yep. He is a veteran point guard. And he is he knows how to get buckets and he can get you a bucket when you need it. Yeah. I think with Lonzo under under Drew's like just like teaching, you know. Yeah, his he'll, wing. He'll he'll do well. Brandon Ingram has come into the league this year and showed off his new like Yep. Scoring ability, mm-hmm. I think he did very well this postseason. Yeah, how's Zion doing? I haven't heard from him ever since he got drafted. Zion's been here and there, but he hasn't really made much of an impact. He didn't uh, play till like the second half. He of was his injured, rookie. Yeah, isn't he injury prone now? He's just really heavy for a guy that size, right? You know. Yep. And to be as bouncy as he is, he broke that shoe. That's that's a lot of pressure on those joints. That's you know right. what I'm saying? That is true. That's true. Yeah. So Western. So let's do Western Conference now. So the Lakers are definitely coming back yeah. to the playoffs for sure. How do you feel about Utah and how they did against um, the Nuggets? I personally really like Utah as a team. Yeah. I know? think they, they played really well. Spider Mitchell? Yeah. He has potential to be like, a Dwayne Wade esque type player. You yeah. Know, he just needs his shot. I see him as a better shooter than D Wade, though. Yeah. But D Wade was very wet from the mid range. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he was. Donovan Mitchell is pretty spotty from three. Yeah. But when he's hitting, he's hitting. You know yep. what I'm saying? That's true. D Wade never really needed to shoot threes. Right. So he never really did. Yep. You know? But um, I think the addition of. What's his name? Their point guard. Mike Conley. Mike Conley. That yeah. was a great acquisition. Yep. Because Mike Conley is one of the most underrated point guards in the league. Yep. You know? Yeah, I agree. He's He plays very well. I think he'll be good as a veteran player to have for Donovan Mitchell as well. Yeah. They just need to do something about old Joe Ingles. 
Yeah, jingles, he's not really producing they much. They need to get him out of there. During the regular season, he was playing very well. Yep. During the regular season, he was shooting spectacularly. I didn't see anything really in the postseason. Right. His athleticism obviously isn't there. Yep. You know, he's just very. He's a very savvy player. Yes. You know, and I didn't see what I expected from him in the playoffs. And I expect them to come back hot next year. Right. Because they also have Rudy Gobert, just locked yeah. down defender. I mean. In the low post. Yeah. The Nuggets played extremely well. We we can talk about them soon after. But I think that, like, you know, they went to game seven with um, with Utah. And Utah played really well. Like, it was, like, right down to the line. That's a matchup I'm looking forward to see in the future is the Nuggets versus Utah. Yeah. Um, but speaking of the Nuggets, they you know, were phenomenal. And they were also kind of like the Miami of the of the West. Oh, yeah. But um, but obviously they didn't make it to the finals. Um, what do you, like, what do you think about uh, Jamal Murray and, and Jokic? How do you feel like they're going to be going forward from oh, now? Oh, I, I love Jamal Murray. And that's one thing that was his biggest criticism last year yeah. from, like, a lot of different analysts was that he didn't shoot enough. Yeah, he put up so many points. Dude. And this year he put the volume in. He must have averaged like 40 points in the whole playoffs. Yeah. Because he was putting up 50-point games. Yeah. Like consistently almost. Between him, Jokic, I like Jokic a lot. And I like his versatility as a scorer. Right. You know, yes. he has the little the little weird step back thing he does. It's like, it's like uh, Dirk. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's a young Dirk. It's like Dirk if he traveled every time he faded away. Exactly. But um <laughs> he can shoot threes, he can shoot mid range, he can get in the low post and play well. Yep. You know, he just needs to add a sense of like kind of like rebounding and yep. like defense. Yeah. Because he did lack defense and late later in the postseason, you know, yep. he would get he would get like driven by. He wouldn't play well on help. You know, he'd get out rebounded. I'd say if he can fix that. Yeah. Keep in mind he also lost a lot of weight. Yeah, yeah. He lost a lot of weight for the bubble to come back. Mm-hmm. He was looking good. But I think he's lacking a little sense of athleticism. Right. Because in now nowadays league, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Bigs are needed to get on the perimeter. You know, mm. and he can offensively get out on the perimeter, defensively, not not very well. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. I think, yeah, I mean, I think they play phenomenal though. I do think that they'll they're definitely coming back with a vengeance this time. Oh, Jeremy and, Grant played well. Yeah, Jeremy extremely. Grant played extremely well. Which I did not. Im- I did not expect him to show up like that. Yeah, because I I I was an OKC fan for many years. Yeah. until we basically traded everyone away, <laughs> but. But Jeremy Grant used to play for OKC. And yeah. He was like okay, like he put up like he maybe like fifteen points. Best, yeah. yeah, but like he balled out. I was impressed by that. If the Nuggets can trade away Paul Millsap and get something, yeah, I think s- something for Paul Millsap, they they could do really well. They could I would go agree. far again next year. I would agree. What do you think about? Okay, so the Lakers, um, Utah's probably coming back. Yeah. Uh, the Nuggets. What about Dallas? How do you see Dallas oh, moving forward? Young Doncic. Yeah, he's I killing it. I think he's a star. I think he has that all-around game. You yep. know, he plays like a rebounding wing. Yep. But scores like Dame Lillard. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He has that slow-ass step back. That's insane. Yeah, dude. He's so dude. He's so dude. He's so <laughs> he's so good. Yeah. Like, I don't know what it is about him. He's like a perfect size too. Yeah. Like his body is built like I don't know, he's just unique kind of in that sense and he's he's playing with Porzingis, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. Which is like, you know, they complement each other fairly well. They just need to get a bench. They need to get a bench. They have no one on the bench. Yeah. They have JJ Barea who's old as bricks. Yeah. They have I don't even know who they have on their on their bench. Yeah. You know, like uh That's a problem. <laughs> They, I don't know who Dallas has on their bench either. Yeah, I'm looking it up right now. Okay, Tim Hardaway, he's a good player. I like him. You know, he can score. Tim right? Hardaway, yeah. Dorian Finney-Smith, he hasn't really been relevant in the last couple of years. I agree, I agree. 
Dwight Powell, they could do better. Steph you know? Curry. <laughs> yeah. Seth, Seth is played okay. well. He's played okay. Well, you know. Yeah. Maxi Kleber is yeah. a slept on shooter. Mm. He is he's slept on. You know. Yep. He doesn't play well, but he has his games where he goes off. Yeah. You know. Jalen Brunson, he has potential to be good. Yeah. I'd say Jalen Brunson has potential. Yeah. You know. Bobon. I don't know. I think Bobon gets a lot of hype. Yeah. Just for being so tall. But uh <laughs> I think if Bobon can develop to be a sustainable player yeah. who you can put out on the court and it not like hurt your team. Yeah. Then he can be put in that five position. Yeah. That's a tall lineup. That's yeah. a tall lineup. I agree, I agree. Because Luca is naturally a small forward. Right. Luca isn't a point guard. Yes. You know. I would agree. And yeah, I mean JJ Barea, the only Puerto Rican I know. <laughs> like I guess purebred because he's we, also have, we also got Melo and like I don't know like D Book, but they don't claim the status. But whatever. Um, but yeah, he's old. He just needs to retire. Um, I mean, we appreciate it, but <laughs> I don't know if he's I don't know if he's what they're looking for. He's thirty six. He played very well with with Dirk, um, but I don't know like the Dallas. Dallas has become a young a younger team, if yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. And that's not really conducive to having older players like that. But they need to get rid of Michael Kidd Gilchrist and Corny yeah, Lee. They're not doing anything. Michael Kidd Gilchrist. DeLon Wright has potential. Right. Trey Burke also has potential. You know? Right. Justin Jackson will surprise you with his three point scoring. He's a great three point scorer. Yeah. Just out of pure efficiency, just spot up from the corner. He's one of the best in the league. And he's only like a sophomore, I think. Yeah, that's crazy. All right, we're coming up to the final minutes of the show, but I want to talk before. Uh, I want to use these last few minutes to talk about the Clippers and the choke, the choke of this of the playoffs. The century. What do you think is going to happen to the Clippers? Uh, is Kawhi staying or leaving? Is Paul George staying or leaving? What's going to happen? They lost Doc Rivers. They, I guess they they got rid of him. What's going to happen there? I'm going to be honest. Um, we obviously all saw playoff P turn into pandemic P, you know, but I don't even fault him. I fault Doc Rivers. Mm. I think Doc Rivers is not a good coach. Okay. You know? <laughs> That's fair. He, uh, That's solid. Uh, for the amount of super teams that he's had, he's he, just, yeah, he's just not provided results. No, but think about it. Think about it. He had the big three Celtics. Yep. Right? He Lob ha- City. He had Lob City. And now he had this super stacked Clippers team and he failed to produce. Yeah. You know? Against the Nuggets. Yeah. Which is crazy. And they were up 3 1, weren't they? Yeah, they were up 3 1. All they had to do was k- close out. Crazy how. All they had to do was close out. Crazy how Paul George and Kawhi, I remember when we were watching the game, they could not make a point to save their lives. Not even that. Think about Lou Williams. Six man of the year for the last like decade. Yeah, yeah, but you his rely only on your job. St- no, no, no. But his only job is to come off the bench and score. Yeah, but you rely on your star players at that. You point. rely on your star players, but Lou will, while not being a starter, he's expected to produce. Right. He's known yeah, throughout the league as your microwave scorer while everyone else is on the bench. Yeah. And he was playing terribly. Yeah. You can't blame Patrick Beverly because Patrick Beverly is just terrible. <laughs> you know, he he's been shooting well you, in, in the last year. You don't like him. I don't I don't I, I don't like him, you know. Yeah, I do think he's yeah. That's fair. I think he's all bark no bite. He's okay. He's eh. You know. Yeah, he's okay. I'd say he So is Kawhi leaving? Are they leaving? Is Paul George leaving? I don't see where Kawhi would go to, you know. What about Miami? <laughs> no, I'm playing. That would be insane. That'd be sick. I don't think he'd play well with Jimmy Butler. I think defensively, though, that'd be an insane team. Yeah. Between him, Bam, and uh, yeah. JB. Yeah. What um, about Paul George? Do you think they're just staying there? Do you think they're giving another playoff run? Do I you- think they just need a new coach. Okay. I think with the new coach, they'll have another playoff run in them. Mm. A coach that actually has them run plays. Yeah. Because if they ran plays... Then there's no need for them to get cold like they did, you know. I, it was them. Their play style was similar to a 2K game where it's just like, all right, 
Pass to whoever's open. Pass to whoever's open, right? Give the ball to one dude. Make him do all the work. You know, maybe set one screen here and there. That's it. You know, there was no motion. There was no play. There was no organization. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, get out there, get a bucket. You know, play D. You know, and a lot of people are quick to forget that Paul George carried the Pacers to push the Miami Heat with a big three to game seven. Yeah. You know, that was when he was legit. Yeah. You know, he still is that same person Mm. and he's gotten better. Yeah. But he hasn't, he has performed poorly since then on playoff runs though with OKC now with the Clippers. Yeah. But you're you also, saying you also have to understand after the gruesome injury. Yeah, you're saying he could. I'm saying I'm, yeah, he could. <laughs> he went, yeah, he were, he went from jumping out of the gym to like having to think twice because right. You know, and he like, can definitely improve. Oh yeah, for sure. I think he's improved a lot so far. He's improved on his ball handling without a doubt. Right. You know. Yeah, I see that. He just has to. I think people shit on him a lot. You yeah. know what I'm saying. And he did deserve to get shit on for choking. Yeah, fair. But it, he also wasn't in an environment that was conducive for him to play well. Mm. You know? Yeah. Because there was no there was no basketball going on on the offense. Right. It was just, hey, quad, do your thing. Do the little drop step in the mid-range and then just shoot over someone that you always do. Right. You know? It was just, give Montres, he, Montreal Harrell the ball and have him, like, bully his way into the low post and... Put up a shot, even though he's undersized. Right. You know, it's like. Yeah, I see that. I think they have potential to do well. I think they have potential to make another run next year with a real coach. I think they have potential. They don't even need to get rid of anyone because their team was decent. Very decent. Yeah. They had a bench that during the regular season they could come in and put up buckets, you know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they kind of have no option, too, because they traded away all their picks. <laughs> yeah, they really did till um, year 2027. So that's tough for them. But, yeah, is there anything else you want to talk about, particularly about any team, any player? I don't, I don't have anything particularly all right. else on my mind. But. All right, cool. Well, I mean, that's an hour, a little bit over an hour, hour, two minutes. But that's solid, bro. Thank you for coming on the show. Oh, thank you for it. having me. Yeah. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, and maybe after the... Maybe, I mean, I don't know when the finals will finish, if tonight or if tomorrow night or, <laughs> yeah, or maybe. anytime soon. But maybe once things develop, once a few trades happen, you can come back on and we can talk more about, you know, yeah. the state of the NBA. We could do this a, a yearly thing, too. Maybe next year we could come back and just, like, talk about the playoffs then. Um, but, yeah, bro, thank you for coming on. Of appreciate course. it. Thank I appreciate you. to everybody listening. Um, Look forward to uh, next week's episode, I believe will be the Black Lives Matter episode, so definitely tune into that one. But yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate uh, you guys listening. Uh, as always, stay safe, wear your masks, and yeah, that's that. Peace out.